What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing another Manchester City transfer update and pleased to say we do have enough news for another video. So make sure like always if you are enjoying the content then do subscribe to my channel. Remember we're going to be doing daily Manchester City transfer updates throughout the winter transfer window coming up from January 1st for you guys to enjoy. So if you haven't already do subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget social media links there in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, 200 likes is the aim and most importantly do let me know your thoughts in the comments below as I'm always interested in what you do have to say with regards to these transfers. So we're going to start off with the outs and we've got a very interesting update on Sergio Gomez. Now Calcio Mercato over in Italy have said that AC Milan, they want to sign Sergio Gomez from Manchester Manchester City. They've put a fee out there and said that Manchester City are believed to be looking for offers of between 18 to 20 million euros. We're looking at just over 15 million pounds, which I think is a fair reflection for Sergio Gomez. I mean, Sergio Gomez is a young player, he's a good attacking prospect, he's pretty versatile, um, and so. I just feel like there's more to come from Sergio Gomez. I just don't think we're going to get the best out of him over the next two or three years, whilst he is, let's face it, a bit a bit part player at Manchester City in our current squad. Whereas if you gave him regular first-team football, I wouldn't rule out in the next 12 to 24 months him really excelling and becoming an excellent player and solidifying his place into the Spanish national team uh, and potentially being a regular for a top European club as well. And with his age and his potential, Potential, I could argue a case that Man City are selling him a little bit short here and we could ask for a little bit more but uh, potentially Man City may be willing to accept a little bit less and a more affordable price here for a lot of European clubs including that in Italy and that of AC Milan as well and potentially Manchester City could include a, a really good sell-on fee I think is what I'd be looking for maybe a buyback clause I'm not so sure I think I'd prefer a good sell-on fee get a good 30-40% put on there because I reckon Sergio Gomez is a top prospect I think at some point could be worth a lot of money I don't think that's in the not too distant future as well uh, I don't think defensively he's the best but I think offensively give him game time could definitely show what he could do. Is he going to get their minutes and is he going to get that playing time at Manchester City? I don't think he is. So we'll see what direction City go in. But uh, potentially this could have something to do with the potential arrival of Valentin Barco uh, to Manchester City from Boca Juniors in the January transfer window, which could well happen. Now moving on to our final story of the outs takes on to, of course, another update on Calvin Phillips. And uh, all Manchester City transfer stories right now seem to be formulating around Calvin Phillips and uh, he's again like Sergio Gomez a bit part player so you may be wondering why so much being made of Calvin Phillips well the importance here is not only is it affecting Manchester City's homegrown quota but also this frees up space in Manchester City's squad here to bring in a seasoned professional to bring in somebody with experience to replace him in our midfield. Man City's midfield is nowhere near complete. Um, Manchester City have had that injury to Kevin De Bruyne and felt the impact of his injury. We've had a suspension to Rodri, yet still Calvin Phillips doesn't get a look in at Manchester City, which is suggesting to me, uh, and it has been suggested that he is going to leave Manchester City in the January transfer window because he wants to be on the plane to Germany, which England have now qualified for for the European Championships next summer. And Gareth Southgate has said he's under scrutiny, he's under pressure here to be selecting the players who who are playing on a regular basis, who are showing good form, because there's players out there who are playing week in, week out for Premier League clubs, not getting a look in for the England national team, whilst Calvin Phillips is getting a look in and he needs regular first team minutes and that's something he has to get sorted in January. He stays at Manchester City and he doesn't force his way into the first team squad, which I don't think he's going to do. I don't think he's on that plane to Germany. That's the harsh reality here. Now, Scott Wilson at Northern Echo has said that Newcastle, they're preparing to make a quick move for Calvin Phillips in January. Newcastle are happy to make this permanent in January. They're also happy to loan him with maybe an obligation or an option to buy. And, and this is good news, in my opinion. Now, Manchester City are believed to be looking at a fee of somewhere between 40 to 50 million pound, which is the money that City would be getting back from when we signed Calvin Phillips from Leeds United a couple of uh, windows ago. Now, uh, it is being reported that Sandro Tonali, Newcastle's new signing in the summer, their central midfield, 
midfielder, he's going to be facing a very lengthy ban uh, after admitting gambling. He's got a gambling addiction. Uh, there's other Italian players that have already been banned seven, eight months. Ivan Tony, we've seen with Brentford have a similar ban, and I'm expecting Sandro Tonali to potentially have that ban for that long as well, which means Newcastle are going to be left short in midfield. Any injuries to their midfield, they're looking very stretched and they're looking for numbers and they regard Calvin Phillips as a quick, easy transfer to get sorted. And if he can get regular playing time, that could be a good solution. And I think from a business point of view, it could be good here for Manchester City. I know there's a lot of other clubs getting linked, Spurs, Bayern Munich to name, just a few that have been getting linked with Calvin Phillips. I think Calvin Phillips has to assess where's he going to get that regular playing time and Manchester City have to assess who's going to give us the best offer and what's best for business. But one to keep an eye on for and as I said, Calvin Phillips leaves Manchester City, this could have a little bit of a knock-on effect, a bit of a domino effect when it comes to Manchester City transfers and with the incomings, I've seen some comments from people saying that Manchester City aren't going to be doing any, bit, any business in the upcoming winter transfer window. I'm a little bit more on the fence here because I sense if City do end up moving on a player or two, all of a sudden City may need to dip into that transfer market. City do have the funds, we'll see. And uh, that leads us very nicely onto the ins and an update on Eberechieze over at Crystal Palace. Now, Pete O'Rourke has said Manchester City remain keen on Eze. Manchester City did ponder a move in the summer and decided against it and to make a move for Mateus Nunes instead. It's believed that Crystal Palace are still holding out for over £70 million. Manchester City are wanting at least one central midfielder. Calvin Phillips leaves. Bernardo Silva's future uncertain with, of course, him having a release clause as well. Man City could, in the next 12 months, We'll be looking at trying to sign a potential two more central midfielders and Eberet Chiesa could be a really good option versatile doing very well with Crystal Palace once more homegrown as well it's almost like you've got a really good attacking option to come into Manchester City to help with our midfield in case Kevin De Bruyne isn't uh, as over his injuries as what maybe Man City are expecting, that City could make a move for Eze instead and then at some point uh, decide to uh, make a move for a, a more defensive midfielder, so to speak, that can uh, occupy in that deeper role for Manchester City. And it's all about what Man City, Man City like versatility, they like players to be able to do several different roles in several different positions and Eze ticks that box City remain keen Lucas Paqueta uh, keeps getting linked with Manchester City he's got his own betting allegations that are going on right now we saw uh, Jao Neves getting linked with Manchester City in my last video from Benfica that's going to be an expensive transfer uh, Javi Simons from uh, PSG the uh, Netherlands international getting linked with Manchester City so a lot of central midfielders are getting linked with City reading between the lines it shows that Man City wants central midfielders i'll keep you guys up to date of course with my transfer update so if you haven't already do subscribe it's free also don't forget social media links they're in the description below if you want to go and uh, follow me on my twitter instagram and tiktok email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries do leave a thumbs up 200 likes is the aim and do let me know your thoughts as well in the comments below i'm pleased to inform you guys the international break is now over done and dusted and we will be back again tomorrow for the big manchester city preview as we're taking on Brighton and Hove Albion in a big Premier League clash this weekend at the Etihad Stadium. So I'll see you for that. So I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace. Ciao for now.